Welcome back to our series on basic accounting principles. So today I want to cover a very special principle called debits and credits. Now a lot of people are really worried about debits and credits. Uh, they feel like it's a concept that's far too complicated for them to understand. But I think that as long as you understand the history of where it came from, we can get you in about five or ten minutes understanding enough about debits and credits that you'll be able to run most of your transactions that you'll ever need to run. The nice thing is in the accounting world pretty much all of your software now can run all of the debits and credits for you on the back end and you never even see or think about these concepts. But every now and then there's a transaction that's very specific to your business that your software can't handle. That's why most accounting software still have a module in them that allows you to do these transactions using the traditional debit and credit method. So that's why it's important for you to understand how the debit and credit method works. To understand that, let's take a step back in time a little bit. So back in the old days, accounting was all done on paper. And you know that whenever you're hand entering stuff on paper, sooner or later you're bound to make a mistake. And we want to catch those mistakes as quickly as possible. So they created this special system of accounting where every transaction had two equal sides. So you can kind of think of it like a little scale. And the idea was cash doesn't disappear in thin air. And cash can't grow out of thin air. It has to come from somewhere, and it has to go somewhere. And so naturally, every transaction has two sides. And as long as we record both sides equally, then we'll know that the transaction got done right. So, for example, um, a cash sale. If I have $100 that I so sold, well, I sold a, tra a widget for $100, then that $100 increases my cash. To balance this transaction, I need to know where that cash came from. We already know it's a widget sale, so that would have come from my sales. So on the other side, I put $100 to sales. Now the transaction balances. If for some reason I forget a piece of that transaction, then all of a sudden my scale doesn't balance anymore, and I'll know right away that something's wrong. And that's the concept that they call dual entry accounting. And all of our accounting to this day is still based on this principle because it ensures the integrity of your transactions. Also, another important thing to, to know about accounting is back in the old days when accounting first got started, I mean, this is talking hundreds of years ago, negative numbers were still not an accepted concept in the business world. Debts were not a big thing back then. And even when they became a big thing in, in businesses, um, math hadn't caught up to them yet. And so in the business world, negative numbers were not a generally accepted principle. So how do you record debts and reduction of cash if you can't use a negative number? The solution that they came up with is if you can't have a negative number, just have two numbers. So you have a number for the positive side and you have a number for the negative side. And they just split those down the middle. So, if we had an expense, for example, like let's say I paid $50 to buy supplies. So we know that our cash went down $50. So we can put that on one side, representing our cash going down. If I make another sale, so well, these are supplies, then I can have my cash go up and put it on the other side. And the beauty of this is now, because I have two different sides, if I add up those sides, I can net them together and we have a net left side of $50. So without using negative numbers, I still get this concept of positives and negatives and nets using two different numbers. And they gave names to those two different numbers and they called them debits and credits. Now, despite what some people believe, debit does not mean left side and credit does not mean right side. There's very technical history of where those names came from. That's way beyond where you need to know. So, for the purpose of 
simplicity, we're going to refer to debits on the left side, and we're going to refer to credits on the right side, because that's consistently how they're done. It's not what they mean, but it's enough for you to know. So we have our debits on the left, we have our credits on the right. Now let's go in and look at how that fits into our different transactions. We know now then that if we put things on the left side, they're debits. If we put things on the right side, they're credits. That's great and wonderful, but how do we know if a transaction belongs on the left side or the right side? To help us with that, let's look back at our accounting equation. So you remember from our past videos, our accounting equation is assets equals liabilities plus equity. And we know from our very last video that equity also includes our income and our expenses. So, if we take and build our little scale to balance around this equal sign, we have our left side, or our debits, and we have our right side, or our credits. So, if an asset, which is on the left side, goes up, that will always be a debit. If our liabilities or our equity go up, being on the right side, those will always be a credit. Now what happens if they go down? I can't use a negative debit. That doesn't exist. So, if something goes down, it's the opposite. So if an asset goes up, it's on the left side, it's debit. If the asset goes down, it's going to be the opposite, a credit. Likewise, if a liability or an equity go up, those are going to be credits. If they go down, they'll be the opposite. They'll be a debit. And that's debits and credits. That's how it works. So let's look at our little scale and try a few of our transactions from before. So we sold $100 in widgets. We know that widgets, well, we know that our cash went up. $100. Cash is an asset. Assets are on the left side, so if an, a left side goes up, it's debit. So we have a debit of $100. Let's label these. These are debits. These are credits. Now, that cash had to have come from somewhere. This isn't a balanced transaction yet. Well, to make it a balanced transaction, we obviously know we need to credit the other side. So that's pretty simple. But let's walk through it for the sake of argument so that we make sure we understand the concepts. So we know that the other side of this transaction is sales. Sales are income. Income increases our equity. And so if our equity goes up, it's a right side, it's a credit. So we have $100 to sales. And this was cash. And now we have a balanced transaction our debits equal our credits. Our um, accounting equation is still balanced. Everybody's happy. That works. And that's how we know that this transaction is complete. Now, let's look at our expense. We bought supplies for $50. So, our cash now goes down $50. If our cash goes down, it's the opposite of a debit, so now it's a credit. So, let's get rid of our prior transaction here. We credit $50 to cash, but that's not a balanced transaction yet. Where did that cash go? It went to supplies. So, our supplies in this case, in this scenario, is going to be an expense account. You, know, you could consider them an asset, maybe they're inventory or something, but for the sake of argument, I'm going to call it an expense account. So the expenses went up. An increase in expenses decreases our net income, which decreases our equity. So our equity is going down. So if our equity goes down, it's the opposite of a credit, so that would make it a debit. So supplies 
is $50, and now our transaction balances, and we know that it's complete. Now, I made that an expense account. Let's say that instead of an expense account, these supplies are actually considered inventory and go in my assets. So, how would that change it? Well, now our asset cash went down $50, but our asset inventory went up $50, and if assets go up, what are they? They're still a debit, so inventory for $50 went up with a debit, and it still balances. Even though we didn't touch this whole right side of the transaction, our assets went up, our assets went back down, so the net change in our assets is zero, net change in our liabilities and equity is zero, our accounting equation still balances, our debits and our credits still balance, still a, a, a good transaction, and we know that it's complete. And that's how it works, and that's all the debits and credits are. So as long as you can pull up this accounting equation, and remember your right side and your left side, and remember the debits are on the right, credits are on the left, that's enough information to be able to handle any kind of debit or credit transaction that you could have to operate in your accounting software. So I would recommend that you look at some of your transactions, practice with these, and get kind of a feel for how they would run, and you'll find that debits and credits are not nearly as scary as you thought they were going to be.